Well, this was unexpected, right? As I try to post on a daily basis, my Wi-Fi goes out. So let's get into it. As I said before, when it comes to adult cartoons, my experience with them has been, for the most part, restricted to Adult Swim. Now, by that, I do not mean the bad drug trips that it prides itself on. I mean the Fox imported cartoons that Adult Swim tends to show at the beginning of its block, from King of the Hill, Family Guy, American Dad, Cleveland Show, and last but not least, Bob's Burgers. It is the newest in the Adult Swim imports, and it took me a while to actually getting around to liking the show. At a first glance, it looked like a poor man's animated modern family slash King of the Hill ripoff. In the second regards, it's a man who likes his job and to an almost prideful degree, with a naggy know-it-all wife and children who embrace the modern values to their father's slight disappointment. Since this is a request, or a suggestion really, my take on this show will be largely expressed through this video as well as the review of this episode. I'm not the one to actually go about looking through the credits of a cartoon episode, but Jim Dotry. Wonder where I heard that name before. So Bob is making his 100,000th burger. One thing you'll notice is that the show has a very dry sort of humor where the jokes are funny in a that's really lame sort of way, but sometimes it'll come out of left field with a legitimately funny joke. Subversion is the key word for today. Wow. Can I touch it? I want to touch it too. I want to feel it between my toes. Mm. I want to put a stick of dynamite in it and blow it up! No, what is wrong with all of you? No one's touching this meat but me. Although Bob's Burgers loves to go on these tangents where the characters seem to be talking just for the sake of talking with no actual development, it doesn't really seem necessary. If anything, I would call it tedious at times. I know it's a small thing, but it's the small things you do that really make your style, and for a show that went out of its way to not be another Family Guy slash South Park, you sure stand out quite a lot, especially on the Fox imported Adult Swim lineup. I love house music. There, I said it. <laughs> Bob is seen talking to a burger or patty, whatever you call it. This goes on for a while until a crew and a cow show up at the front of their restaurant. You also get to see the comic-like art style that the show does perfectly. Seeing this up and close on my computer slash phone has made me see some of the smaller details that they put into the show. It almost seems like a comic to cartoon show port. The man outside who seemed friendly at first accuses Bob of being a cow murderer. Never mind the fact that he merely orders the burgers from an already slaughtered cow. And it's the slaughterhouses that you'd want to attack. I mean, chop the head and the entire body. Body goes down. No implications intended. You will decide her fate. It's a count down. We'll see what your conscience tells you when you're looking your burger right in the eye. Bob's wife comes out and makes the situation worse. Also, the conflict settles in around a little under three minutes. That's okay because this is a 22 minute cartoon and the beginning was more about telling jokes than establishing anything truly important. It is also important that the cow does not have any human-like traits. Turns out dad's been putting murdered cows in our hamburgers. And you made us a part of it. You make me sick. You'll notice quickly that the children do not make the situation better at all. But are they a good hindrance? We'll see later on. Beef happens to come from steers, which are male cows. Then, uh, how do you explain that udder? That's, um, not an udder. You go ahead and milk that cow. Milk it good. Oh, we did. You shouldn't have. Milk doesn't come out of that. Some came out of it. In that bucket over there. These are the type of jokes that work when you don't show the cows <coughs> utter. When you word your jokes this way, it can slip over people's heads. You aren't bashing it over their heads, saying that it's a double entendre. Also, the use of urine instead of uh, is much better on the imagination. Bob calls animal control, and they basically do nothing. Do you think cows should be ground up for food? Personally, I don't really care. But my father, he loves grinding them up. Gives them a rush. Makes him feel alive. Daddy's a bad, bad man. I would like to believe that Louise has a higher intelligence and knows that this recording will probably be like the thousands of other times the beef industry was exposed. People love burgers, therefore the idea of one cow being murdered is utterly weak. Sorry if that upsets you guys, but if you were watching this recording, would you want to go and save the world? Well, check this out! <laughs> Watch how this video is gonna go down for copyright. I mean, it's Fox and copyrighted music. I really don't know how I'm gonna get past this copyright bot. 
No, I mean it's in the shape of a smiley face, like an emoticon. Whoa, 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 whoa. You think the cow is texting you an emoticon with its butt? Very interesting. So this is a side plot with Louise manipulating Tina into thinking that the cow is communicating through fecal matter. The amount of waste references in this episode ironically doesn't make the episode crappy. The natural progression of events it makes the show appear more realistic to the eye and in this slice of life show, especially with this form of comedy, you need to make it look like a big situation when in reality, it is just an inconvenience. Mom. Let's say you had a brilliant plan, but to execute it, you needed to write something using cow poop. How would you do it? Hmm, I would use a frosting bag. As you can see, even with the main plot and a side plot, the episode still has time to develop characters and relationships. And I believe this is very beneficial because they could have easily went through and deleted the scene having Louise already know what to do. But by giving this interaction between the two, it does service those who are getting invested in this show, showing the little details that Louise does throughout her day and a specific way that her mother would react. I also like how they change the burger of the day. Stuff like that usually goes unchanged. You know, they usually use the classic cartoon scribbles of illegible ambiguity. What? Well, um, well this. So Louise sneaks out and makes an even happier emoticon. <sighs> emoticon. It all goes well for Bob as he is making business. However, that doesn't stop Gene from stealing the show with his incredible house music. There's no such thing as bad publicity. This could be huge for us. Like a sex tape. Like a sex tape. Now, this joke, they spelled it out for you. They can't all be hidden between the lines. So they meet this couple. They run a petting zoo. They also speak very soft and humble. The camera focuses on them because confirmation bias. Bob starts to have feelings of guilt and doubt. This shows in his dream where he believes that he is a very evil cow killer. Murderer! Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, murderer. As he wakes up, it's raining. He stands outside with the cow and this is the scene where Bob starts to have feelings towards the cow. The music is very nice. Bob decides, since Randy really does not care about the cow and only cares about being famous and making a point for himself, he'll bring the cow upstairs. Now, of course, Linda isn't very happy to see it. Bob tries to push it downstairs, but it doesn't budge. We know you'll push on a cow's butt for half an hour without asking for help. Gotta have that butt all to yourself. Louise means well. This is just how she entertains herself. Do you want me John Hancock? Yeah. Anyway, no, I'm on the line here. Better get used to this, huh? <laughs> Gotta be in the movies. I, just on the line where it says signature. Line, right? Just try anywhere? Yeah. No, no, okay. where it says signature. Right. Okay. What's your name? Do you want it to you? No, I... Teddy, what are you doing? I'm... This is the kind of stuff that makes the episode seem very slow. Teddy really didn't need to be in this episode. Louise ends up manipulating Tina into thinking that the cow hates her. During all of this, Linda pushes the cow down the stairs and ties it back outside. However, when they get outside, they realize that it's stolen. So now they see the weird, humble, soft-spoken couple kidnap the cow for their rundown, cheap petting zoo. Which, between you and me, I don't even think is legal. They end up kidnapping it at night because of... Infrared. Uh, thanks, kids. Uh, damn it! I missed the signal to stand up. Sorry, everybody. You let down the unit. I said I'm sorry. Open the gate. That was easy. Huh, wonder what ever happened to that button. The lady tries to come outside and stop them, but they end up saving the cow anyway. Bob's Burgers was never really one for larger than life climaxes. In fact, you'll see later why I said subversion is the key word. The countdown reaches zero and after banding together to rescue the cow, Randy goes back into full on Hollywood douchebag mode. Bob even calls him out for it. However, when they argue, a truck is speeding towards the cow. Oh my God, that was close. I don't know what I would do if anything happened to move. Subversion. The show does it pretty great. The cow somehow makes a heart-shaped poop that Louise didn't make. Tina ends up keeping it. So Bob and the cow end up talking. Bob's subconscious tells him that he needs to continue making burgers and they end on another dirty joke and that was Bob's Burgers Sacred Cow. What separates Bob's Burgers from other Adult Swim shows is that Bob is a very pathetic character but in a good way. Bob is portrayed as a human, especially when it comes to bravery and vulnerability. If this was a Family Guy slash South McFarlane show, they could have easily knocked down the woman with their strength. If it was a King of the Hill show, well... Didn't they already have a cow in the backyard before? My point is, Bob is very weak, but he makes up for it by meaning what he says and doing what is right for him, his family, 
and his business. So this is another requested video. I took this request from this person here and I am still taking requests from May into mid-June. I'll turn it off around mid-June and I'll try to expedite my backlogs of stuff that you may or may not be curious about. As always, I hope your time is well spent and alpha.